you know how you, uh, when you're getting up to speak, they frequently ask you to do a sound check? I thought we'd do a language check. Um, so I'm going to give this presentation in Scottish. For those, people who, for those people who don't know Scottish, it's a much more advanced form of English. So there's too many vowels in the, in the English language and word endings are frequently unnecessary. So what you're going to see is a natural language compression as I go through this presentation. So, okay, so um, this presentation is going to be relatively simple. I'm going to talk about uh, some business use, business trends that basically are um, uh, indicators and reasons uh, why we actually built um, some of the innovations that we've brought to market over this last year and that we're going to bring to market in the coming years. And I'll go through them in uh, some detail. Um, but what I thought I would do is uh, start with uh, our friends at uh, JP Morgan. Uh, what a turnaround if you think about it. Since 2005, when Jamie Diamond uh, took over, they had meteoric uh, rise and absolutely fantastic financial results. But actually, if you look at them over the last uh, year and a half, um, how the mighty have fallen. And it's a, a pretty interesting story. Um, it, it begins with uh, the London Whale uh, case, which if you don't know, uh, basically uh, they lost $6.2 billion in what can only be described as cavalier trading. And they were subsequently fined $930 million. When the regulators uh, took uh, stock of what they had done, they found that in London there was only one person actually checking all the trades. And even then, they were doing it on a spreadsheet. So very little oversight in the trades, and then um, very crude and suspect modeling. They subsequently followed it up by being fined another 80 million um, because they were charged with um, fraud with regard to providing card fraud services that they actually never delivered to, um, to their uh, customers. So at this particular time, there's seven different regulating bodies uh, chasing them. There's um, some uh, five or six states going after them and three different nations coming after them. And actually, that's not the most surprising thing. The most surprising thing, to date, they've spent $23 billion in legal fees. And I, I was reading an article yesterday, there's more to come. So what's the takeaway? We're actually in the wrong profession. <laughs> I, should, I, should, I should have done a legal degree. But because of all the regulations, one of the other big changes they made, they laid off 15,000 employees just to recoup uh, some of their expenses back. And now they've got 5,000 uh, people purely focused on compliance. So another takeaway is a big change in their business, high regulations, uh, under incredible supervision. And they've actually got to um, generate uh, a series of applications that can automate this, um, this uh, compliance uh, problem they've got. Um, recently, this is a survey by the conference board. This is the priorities um, CIOs um, have ranked. And if you actually look down, down them, I'm sure you can relate to many of them. Certainly at uh, FICO, number one there is a huge problem for us. Um, hiring top engineers, hiring top salespeople is probably the number one uh, problem we have. Um, for many financial institutions, many businesses as a whole, um, actually freeing up enough expense to invest in innovation is a huge problem. And customer relationships. We've hosted a number of customers where they're trying to reorganize their business. Their businesses are in silos, and what they're trying to do is focus and reorganize their business around the customers. So net net, um, you know, this is very indicative of the challenges at FICO and Will Lansing, our CEO, faces. And what's what I guess the positive side is those bolded and highlighted are actually solutions that uh, we actually have um, in our in our tool chest that we can apply to the problem. When you look at CIO challenges, um, again, with I'm sure you can relate to many of them. Uh, when you go down the list, uh, just uh, off the top of, of my head, if you look at the IT area, over the last year, we've had to take $10 million out of our IT budget to just improve productivity um, and to refocus the IT organization to, be better service the, to, better service, to better service the company. Um, a, a term that you'll hear um, through the latter part of this presentation, and a term you may have already heard, is this thing called the third platform. How many have actually heard that term? No? 
Okay, so, because I've given this presentation one or two times, our salespeople, good, good memory. So um, in terms of computing, um, the, first was the, the first platform was the mainframe, the green screen, green screen, stream, screen. <laughs> Told you, Scottish. The second platform was the client server, and the third platform actually is made up of four different platforms. The platforms are social media, they're cloud computing, they're uh, big data and mobility. And you'll see these four platforms actually, lots of investment, lots of focus within the enterprises, and real differentiators in terms of one where IT is, uh, is being spent and the, innovator, uh, the innovations that are coming from that third platform. Actually, in the coming years, you're gonna see IT spend in the third platform about being about 75% to 80% of the investment. Again, uh, when you look down this slide, those areas highlighted are areas that uh, FICO has solutions and is making investments in. Okay, so these were the, the, some business news, some business trends. So what's, what's the takeaway? Well, the, the takeaway is when you distill down uh, these challenges, it really comes down to a couple of things. More focus on the customer, improving customer satisfaction, improving customer service maximizing return on equity, and of course, at the same time, um, using your existing uh, investments. Nobody wants to rip and replace. That's been a, you know, a battle cry for, for uh, 10 years. So if you're designing a solution to actually meet these business challenges, what do you need to, what do, you need to do? Well, it's got to be a, an intelligent system, right? It's got to be, provide a set of intelligent uh, solutions. So what does that mean? It's got to adapt to uh, future needs. So that's one thing. The second thing is you've got to be able to take in the business constraints. You've got to be able to take in the rules that apply to that, um, that particular problem. You've got to incorporate the, the facts, and that's all got to be done extremely easily. And then lastly, you've got to be able to show and demonstrate continual improvement, and you've got to provide the tools to do that. Another uh, requirement is, is the area of consistency. Now, um, Sometimes you've got data you just can't get access to. Sometimes there's uh, information on social media that you like to use in your business problem. So what you need is a platform that's gonna basically sit across all your data repositories and aggregate them. When I worked at Sun Microsystems, now Sun was a pretty big company, $18 billion. McNeely asked the question, how many databases do we have in the company? How many data repos repositories? And so the IT organization went on account and found over 10,000 repositories within the company. So that's just Sun, right? So, so these are all data assets. In many cases, there were acquisitions with customer information. And because it was in different formats, it was very difficult to get one perspective of the customer. So whatever your solution uh, that you, you want to provide or we want to provide has to take into account that um, bifurcation of information the huge number of, of data repositories and data formats. You've got to be able to also fit within the existing processes and existing infrastructure, right? Whether it's an ERP system, an HR system, uh, whether it's uh, salesforce.com, whatever, whatever you're doing, you've got to fit within that infrastructure. And then lastly, the decisions and actions you make have to be consistent, and more importantly for the regulators, um, uh, you've got to be able to have traceability. And then the last point is enablement. How do you enable your, your people? So everybody's walking around with smartphones. So you've got to be able to provide real-time information. You've got to provide it in the, in the right form. So you've got to use and enable your people. You've got to use the technology and communications infrastructure or, or other technologies you've got in place. You've got to integrate, you've got to extract the information, and you've got to enable the employees. And then lastly, speed and agility. Um, I'll, I'll give an example of a, an application that we uh, built recently using the FICO solution stack that basically took us a twelfth of the time it would have done through traditional uh, approaches. And by the way, we've implemented over 33 different origination solutions over the years. So net-net, when you look at um, uh, you know, the, de the design points that a solution has to have, it has to be intelligent, it has to be consistent, you've got to enable your employees and processes, and then lastly, it's got to be um, incredibly easy to use, fast to use, and provide you with agility. So 
If you take a look at the, um, this is our engagement framework as we know it at uh, FICO. The first thing I want to point out is it's all around the customer. The solutions um, and our technologies, uh, our solution design center is all around the customer. Now I put this up because many people aren't familiar with the uh, full range of, of FICO products. In fact, every time I present to uh, customers, they're always um, pretty surprised at the range of products we've got. In this presentation, I'm going to focus on data management and uh, uh, big analytics um, in particular. But in terms of customer engagement, we have a full suite of digital marketing products. In the communications area, we bought the industry leading uh, company in that space, uh, Adeptra. They're used by Citibank, Chase. Chase have some 16 applications for fraud, for collections and recovery, and for customer service. And so that's what we have in the, the communications uh, area. And in the customer strategy area, this leverage is a, a product that we've got known as Triad. And the, the purpose of a triad is to provide, provide employees, sorry, customers with treatments that are unique to them. So you can adapt based on their fraud scores, sorry, their, their uh, credit scores, different strategies to provide real-time um, uh, offers to them. Okay, so the FICO solution stack. This is one of the innovations that uh, we're particularly proud of. It, um, it's already been used internally. Um, it will be uh, generally available within the next two weeks. And it's made up of three main areas. The main areas are, at the top, an application development framework. So this is, a, a, you can think of it as a rapid application development environment. So the big differentiation here is you don't have to be a, a Java developer to actually use this. You can be a, an analyst, you can be a, a, a business, a fairly sophisticated business operations person, but you can develop very um, powerful Java applications. The second area is um, the decision management platform. Decision management platform is fundamentally an execution engine. It'll execute rules, business rules. It'll execute business models, and then it will also score them. They're the fundamentals of the business uh, decision management platform. And then lastly, there's the visual framework. This is a, a dashboarding and a BI capability. So they're the three components of the FICO solution stack. So if you've been in the IT industry for any length of time, you'll know WebSphere and you'll know Web <laughs> from, from Oracle. This is similar, but it's also fundamentally different because these development environments can actually be significantly enhanced by the capabilities of this platform. Okay, so um, at the highest level, what is it? It's, as I said, it's a series of execution engines and it's provided by a number of core services. The core services, analytic data mark, it's basically the login capability. So all the decisions, all the transactions that are taking place are basically logged in your, your ag <laughs> analytic data mark. These components, so this is based on a component model so you can think of it as a series of Lego blocks and the, the, uh, how you connect them is the fundamentals of, of the architecture. Um, so the component lifecycle does basically versioning. It makes sure that the components that you introduce into the decision management platform are the right uh, components to be used with the other components already there. Elasticsearch, this is a complete text uh, search capability. It does contextual search. And then lastly, access to <laughs> this basically makes sure you've got, um, if you've got, you've got permission to use these components in the particular environment. So again, decision management platform, it's the heart of the FICO solution stack. It's a series of execution um, engines. As you go along the top, if you're familiar with our tools, we have a, a rules-based tool which is called Blaze. Um, that plugs in uh, when you author through that environment, that these business rules will just drop right into the decision man pl management platform and be executed. Same with model builder. You can use our model builder capability, build the model and drop it in. So it's a plug and play um, platform. Just a couple of examples. This is Data Orchestrator. Again, it's a new product. What do you use it for? You basically integrate bureau data from bureaus such as Equifax, uh, from Experian, TransUnion. We can build a connector to any of the bureaus in less than a few hours, right? So we've already done, uh, done this for a Russian bureau, 
um, but it just doesn't integrate bureau data. It's also a templating capability that allows you to integrate with any of your data repositories. So that's one component that fits in. Okay, um, how do people, what are the problems it helps you solve? Well, there's an, as I mentioned, Sun has 10,000 databases. There's always new uh, infrastructure coming into play in an enterprise, there's always new applications. And so these are potential data repositories that you quickly want to aggregate the data. Unstructured data, um, you also want to take unstructured data and structure it. In the enterprise today, there's roughly about 80% of your data is already unstructured. So you want to be able to take that unstructured data, structure it, and then import it. Real-time context, whatever you do, you're not only going to want to import batch data, you're going to want, going to, want to import uh, real-time data. So they're, they're kind of fundamental requirements and challenges that um, the enterprise had, has, and that's actually what Data Orchestrator does. So this is just the, a high-level diagram showing how it, uh, what the major components are. But down here in the bottom, uh, importing your, your uh, data types from your various data repositories, you're transforming them, you're validating the data, you're aggregating the data, and then you're passing it on to your decision management uh, component, your dec decisioning component. Now, um, this is somewhat of an eye chart, but this is one of the next, so data orchestrator is something we've already brought to market along with um, the decision management platform, which will be available in the next few weeks. This is the data management and integration platform. This will be available in six months' time, and this, this basically allows you to have a, a data platform that sits over all of your repositories. What does it do? It ingests batch data, it ingests real-time data, and it'll ingest streaming data. Once the data's ingested, it'll cleanse it, it'll filter it, and then it'll put it on a, a bus, whether it be a, an enterprise bus, a complex event processing bus, to derive either events or information that you then pass on to your uh, decision and capability. <laughs> Text analytics. Um, as I mentioned, 80% of, of the data that you have in, in your enterprise is unstructured. In actual fact, um, we were meeting with a, a legal company who do e-discovery. E um, they're employed by the biggest banks. Their problem, or the bank's problem, is um, there's a, a, a regulatory uh, issue, there's a, a legal issue been raised, and they've got uh, petabytes, terabytes of, of uh, email that's got to be ingested, structured, and then, and then processed. And if you think about that level of data, you know, it's, it's not unusual to have uh, two, three, four hundred, actually in one case, seven hundred uh, lawyers all working on a particular case, all processing the, the documents and the email um, to basically get, get at the root cause. So this is the components which make up our uh, text analytics engine. Um, one of the other things that we do within FICO is to get at um, a, a much higher rate of um, innovation, we extensively use um, uh, open source. And uh, within this box, it shows you the open source technologies that we actually use to build our uh, text analytics uh, capability. At the highest level, what, what does text analytics do? It allows you to ingest the data, it allows you to discover particular areas of interest, extract those areas, and then categorize it. In terms of the technologies we use, Tika uh, imports PDF documents, it imports uh, Microsoft documents, it imports rich text documents. It, that information is then uh, passed through Lucene. Lucene is a sophisticated search, text analytics search capability. And then we pass it on to our decision management platform to make a subsequent decision. <laughs> now, um, just a, a little example. Um, there's a guy called Mike Flowers. Um, he was the first director of analytics uh, for the state of New York. Um, one of the problems he was asked to solve was, we've got 17 government agencies, we've got a huge number of uh, different types of data, and the problem we've got is that in the, the, um, the city of New York, we have nine, um, we have, um, 
basically 900,000 uh, let, uh, uh, let apartments and a number of them are basically illegal. <laughs> so the whole, whole situation here is that um, someone will buy a property and they'll subdivide it illegally so that um, so it can be uh, let out, right? So it was supposed to support four people, they'll subdivide it so it's eight. Uh, 12, whatever it is, the number of people who can actually um, reside in that, um, in that particular uh, apartment. Now, it turns out that illegal conversions have a 70% higher chance of fatal f uh, fatality and serious uh, injury. And so Mike Flower's uh, job was to take all these different rep uh, repositories in the 17 different agencies, bring them together to make a prediction on whether it was an illegal conversion or not. At that particular time in New York, there was uh, 230 inspectors. Uh, their history was about 23%. After Mike Flowers built his system, built his data management system, he had uh, five kids out of school because the, the analytics, the senior analytics people didn't believe the job could be done, so he had five kids out of school. He improved the detection of uh, illegal conversions from 23% to 78%. So there's a, a, a very simple example of using data management infrastructure, text analytics, and a decision platform to really improve the uh, productivity of the 230 inspectors. Okay, a big part of the design center for FICO is most of our customers already have SaaS models or SaaS tools in place. And so a big part of the decision management platform is actually allowing uh, customers to use their existing investment in these tools. And so we have a PMML. PMML is predictive markup modeling language capability. So this is, again, an execution engine that executes standards-based models. On the right-hand side, uh, you can see that uh, this is a list of the industry's uh, model building uh, applications. So what we've got is a capability to um, allow a customer to use whatever they want in terms of model building tools, convert it to a PMML model, import it into our, our uh, data management platform, and execute that model. Now, how many people have heard of Hadoop? OK. So um, if you haven't heard of Hadoop, just very simply, uh, Hadoop is a, a technology that allows you to uh, import masses of data allows you to basically subdivide that data, parse it out to individual compute nodes, execute the, the, whatever the function is you want to execute, and then get a result and then reassemble it. That's basically what the Hadoop infrastructure does. It's open source, although there's a number of companies such as Cloudflare, uh, MAPAR, and Hortonworks that uh, support management infrastructure for Hadoop. The, the, the important point here is the decision management platform is very much a big data platform. So basically, it's e once you've got a problem that you can map, reduce, or divide up, um, you can then use our PMML execution engine on Hadoop to uh, make a decision, get a result. To me, one of the most exciting uh, developments, I've been in the development uh, area for um, th 35, even longer years now, and uh, one of the uh, really exciting uh, developments uh, for me, even though this is actually technology that's been around for a number of years, it's actually, its time has come. And that's a uh, rapid application um, development. And this is the top layer. This really is the, um, the, the really sweet spot of, of the FICO stack. What does it allow you to do? It allows you to take a business problem convert it into a workflow and a set, set of uh, data entities. Um, and then basically, uh, you know, it, it's a what you see is what you get type of interface. It allows you to decompose the business problem at the highest level. That business problem is then converted to Java code automatically. And so the, tur the turnaround time is phenomenal. And I'll get to a specific um, example in a second. But this, this suite also provides you configuration management. In other words, as you design your application, there's a repository that, that uh, basically holds all the creations, all the workflows that um, you've generated. 
There's also a monitoring and integration capability. So there's, again, coming back to this important point of integrating to your existing systems. There's a list of, of um, uh, integration points and integration technologies that are already pr uh, previously available to you that all you have to do is say you want to connect to that uh, integration framework and it will actually do it automatically. And then lastly, there's a staging area where you can stage your application, you can test it out before you promote it to your, your, um, your execution environment. So what's the big deal? The big deal is that it will give you a 70% uh, reduction in application development time. And as I said, I'll come to a specific example. We're talking about um, several million dollars in one um, example that we've just finished within FICO. The more importantly, what it does is it allows you to get very rapid results. Um, we just um, won a, a deal with a very large insurance company. Um, and it was for a property and casualty fraud example, we were actually able to put that uh, demonstra demonstration together in a matter of a few weeks, right? And it was using sophisticated little analysis. We provided the, the, the user interface, the, the, the uh, case capabilities, all in a few weeks for, as a proof of, proof of concept. So that's one of the beauties of the rapid application development environment. More importantly, the speed that you get during initial development, you get on subsequent, um, you get on subsequent developments. So we, we deployed a origination solution um, based on uh, the WebSphere IBM WebSphere stack for a customer. It was a year and a half's worth of development for about 15 developers to provide all the customizations. So again, if you're getting a five to one improvement, you, uh, or even if it's three to one improvement, you're able to take that year and a half custom development down to six months. So that's, that's the, the real power. So if you take nothing away from uh, this presentation, this is a real proven uh, technology and approach to application development. Um, and again, you sit in front of the business user, if there's a mistake, and we made a pretty significant uh, mistake in developing our, our origination solution, we were able to correct it within weeks. Okay, so um, this is actually, we, we uh, just released a product. Um, it's already uh, been deployed um, for a, a very large, one of the top three computer companies in the world. Uh, as a SaaS offer, um, but we also uh, sold this into um, a Romanian bank. But um, this is an origination solution. It, the, the point I'm trying to make is not that it's an origination solution, but this is a very large, the, the development team that I had working on originations was 55 people. Okay, so we're not talking about a small development. And the development time was a couple of years for the application. So what this shows you, the development team walked in and said, 55 people a year and a half. That was when, how this first started. And I said, you need to go back and try again because we'll be out of business by the time we actually get this product to market. Because as you well know, once you get the product to market, it's gonna take you another two years before it's mature. So the important point is that the, the, after a subsequent uh, design work, uh, architecture work and design work, they came back and said it's um, uh, using Red Hat technologies, uh, it's 10,500 uh, hours roughly, it's um, uh, basically um, 20 month development, and it's uh, at least 26 developers on top of the product you already have. So I said, you need to go back and take a different approach and come back and talk to me. So we, we engaged with a, a, a vendor called OutSystems. Um, we used their product um, and I asked them, okay, so for the same specification, how long will you take? They came back with an estimate of 2,500 hours. Uh, they said they could do it in uh, seven months and they said they could do it with eight people. And I said, I don't believe you, right? I just don't believe you. I go from 55 people to eight people, I just, I just don't buy it, right? 35 years, I just don't buy it. They went back and said, you know something? You, you're exactly right. It's uh, 11 people. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not eight people, and, but we can still do it in the same time. Again, huge amount of skepticism on my part. I said, will you do it on a fixed bid? They said yes, they went off, and we've got one of the, uh, in my opinion, a world-class originations product uh, as a result. So these numbers are real numbers, um, and as I said, uh, it's not just a case of building that product. All of our customers, and we've got hundreds of originations customers, all want custom development. 
And the, the beauty of this, uh, a, this product and this solution is that you can turn around extensions to the product very, very easily. Okay, um, so uh, I'll just touch on Visual Insight Studio, which is the bottom layer of the product. Uh, the first thing is it's a complete business intelligence capability with a data warehousing uh, capability also integrated. But the, um, for me, it's the ability to create dashboards and, and, and visual insights into your decisioning and basically do it incredibly rapidly. And again, in the design center for the entire stack was um, so that not, you didn't have to have sophisticated Java developers you could operate at analyst level or at the operations level or even the business user level to extend the, the capabilities, which is uh, what you can do. So NetNet, what is the FICO solution stack? It's a complete application development environment. It's, it's, you don't have to have an, an analytics uh, uh, basis for what you're developing. You just have to have, it could just be a data uh, application, data management application, data visualization application, and you can do it. But if you're gonna use sophisticated text analytics or decisioning, the support is there. And as I mentioned already, this is available in a couple of weeks, and we're already working on a major client uh, development with it. Another area that I'm personally um, uh, excited about is the um, FICO Analytic Cloud. How many people are familiar with the taxonomy of a cloud or the structure of a cloud? Two, I should hope so. That, that's a CIO raising his hand, I should, I should hope so. <laughs> Basically, four, four components to think about. There's this, the solutions, the services, so salesforce.com example would be CRM, so that's the first, the series of developed services, the, the software as a service offers. The second is uh, the force platform, which is the development environment in the cloud. So rather than develop uh, uh, in-house on a laptop, you can develop in the cloud. The third is the, uh, the basically the application warehouse. It's where uh, you store, or the marketplace, it's where you store your developed components, so your professional services organization can store their components, but it's also where your partners can store their components and you can sell them. And then lastly is the communities, right? And this is where you're bringing in uh, your experts, your brilliant minds with expertise in you know, analytics or expertise in oil and gas or, or healthcare. So what does that look like? So as you can see, the analytics marketplace, there can be models in here as well as full up applications. There's a complete set of uh, managed communities and then also your ISVs and system integrators. Now, um, I'll just uh, talk about Kaggle. Um, this is an offer I want to make to you. For those who don't know Kaggle, Kaggle is a, a relatively small company, but, a, but actually a brilliant company. They've managed to take 120,000 of the world's greatest uh, analysts and statisticians, uh, operational research, and they run competitions. And uh, two competitions run recently. One was by Microsoft, where they wanted to take all of their, their literature and basically better catalog it. Another and more interesting example is General Electric. General Electric provided the Kaggle community with all the airline arrival information. That community then competed to improve the, pro the probability of arrival. They improved at 40%. So think about it. How, the operation, the savings, and the improvement in operations by a 40% improvement in arrival. So here's the offer. Um, if you're interested in running a, uh, providing us with your data and also uh, paying a partial amount to doing a Kaggle competition, we'll also uh, pay for the rest of it and we'll do that um, research and development on the FICO Analytic Cloud. We'll provide you the results. Now, what are we talking about? It's roughly a couple of hundred thousand, do couple hundred thousand dollars. We'll pay half, we might even pay more depending on what the application is and what we do with the IP at the result. Okay, so just uh, wrapping up, what's in the FICO Analytic Cloud? It, it launches at the end of this year. Uh, what you have is you've got all of, of um, or the majority of the FICO um, uh, services, so communication services, marketing services, fraud services, collection and recovery services. It will have the uh, FICO solution stack for doing analytic modeling and tools. 
um, as well as complete collaboration and security infrastructure um, and uh, a number of specific frameworks such as uh, campaign optimization, pricing op optimization. And then going out through the year, um, so this is basically over the next year, you'll see tremendous amount of investment in text analytics. So what have we built? We built the next um, uh, AJ, a third generation platform where you've got full, full support for uh, communication services, uh, some support for uh, social media, tremendous amount of capabilities in the big uh, data area uh, and analytics area. That's what we built. So what can we do for you? This is the range of, of capabilities we have internally and services that uh, we're providing both on-premise and with the cloud. So with that, um, our design center, uh, this is a, I'm a, I'm a, a rotten golfer, uh, which is sad for a Scotsman. Um, but the whole design center for this was provide these really powerful analytic tools, these rule-based tools, and make them as easy to use as possible. In other words, you don't have to be a, a PhD in analytics to be able to use the capabilities. So that's where uh, effortless power comes from. So in summary, um, we, we digested the market needs we uh, hopefully organized our solutions to attack some of the biggest problems in the, uh, in, in the industry. And then we created a platform to really ac uh, accelerate the innovation. When I took over as CTO, um, we were spending a huge amount on, in terms of re-engineering our, our, our products on the IBM stack. It was killing us, right? There's a, a film, The Perfect Storm. Well, this was The Perfect Storm in development. And so the good news is we've re-architected all of our products We've got away from uh, the heavy overhead of uh, that particular stack, and we're using rapid application development to actually accelerate our innovations to market. So with that, thank you.